This is a sermon recorded on Sunday, March 10th, 2013 at the Harbor Church in North Seattle. Dr. John Westfall speaks on Serve Somebody in the series, The Five Choices That Shape Our Lives. The scripture for today is Joshua 24, verses 14 through 15. Uh, about uh, when we started this series on the five choices that shape our lives, I always knew how it would end, and it would end with this uh, this Sunday, and and with a song that um, I felt came from uh, the Old Testament uh, passage that we're going to be looking at today, and it's uh, it's a Bob Dylan song called "You Got to Serve Somebody," and. Uh, so I'm telling you this in case you don't like it and all that stuff. It's not that Jeremy's inflicting this on us because he didn't actually know the song. He had to learn it for today. So, so take it. And you know, if you know the chorus, you're free to join in. Yeah. <laughs>
sung on the, the last Sunday of this series because we've been looking at the five choices that shape our life. It's probably like week 10 maybe, but I never was good at math. But uh, I think that this choice over all the others uh, has the power to um, set the direction that we live, uh, to determine our experiences, um, and, and the shape of our life. What, what form is our life going to take? And uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to uh, the very end of the book of Joshua, the Old Testament. And uh, we get this challenge. <clears throat> Joshua's talking to the people that's just before his death. And uh, they've moved into the Promised Land. They've had all these adventures and experiences. And he calls them together. And uh, verse 14, chapter 24, he said, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river in Egypt and serve the Lord. But, hear this, if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Now, let's pray. Lord Jesus, teach us. Give us the courage to trust you and, and to hear your word. And uh, Lord, we pray that you would shape our life as we as we choose as we choose you. Amen. Um, you know this whole idea of choice uh, has been intriguing to me, and I've been learning a lot as we've gone through this. Um, because I I grew up in an atmosphere uh, in a world where um, I always thought I didn't have much choice. That things were pretty well set for me. Um, I had fairly strong, uh, strong and erratic parents, and so I never felt like there was much choice in anything. Um, usually the choice was to not do what they said and bear the consequences, basically. That's, that was it. And then that translated into my view of God early on. Usually it's, it's uh, you know, God wants me to do something, I have the choice to not do it, and then there's consequences, right? And, that, and I heard that preached over and over again, and I never felt any freedom uh, as a follower of Jesus because there was always kind of this, uh, this sledgehammer over my head of, okay, but if you choose poorly, bam, you know? So thanks, Lord, for giving us uh, free will, you know, and thank you for all this so-called choice that we have but I never felt like there was much choice Did you ever get that where you, it just seemed like you're you're in this conveyor belt and it's going along and if you got off the conveyor belt bad things would happen so better stay on it yes I'm choosing to serve the Lord I don't think that that's what this scripture is talking about I think actually that uh, most of my life I was wrong I misunderstood what God was saying and how it was um, happening because um, 
this week as I was looking at this I realized that there is no punishment set up for not choosing the Lord you can choose the devil you can choose the Lord you know but you got to serve somebody so if, if you don't serve the Lord if you want to serve the gods of your forefathers back uh, you know in a van down by the river I think it said then then uh, that's what you want to you want to serve the gods of uh, the people around whom you're living just your current neighbors and your culture go do that and the people said in verse 16 far be it from us to forsake the Lord and serve other gods and uh, talk about how okay we're gonna serve the Lord and then verse 19 I, I never really tuned into this before I want you to see this Joshua comes back when they say they give the right answer isn't that weird they give the right answer okay we're gonna serve the Lord like you said we're with you you know that's where the pastor should close in prayer because everybody's on board instead what does he do in, in verse 19 he says to the people you're not able to serve the Lord what what kind of pastor is this they finally make the right choice and he says you're not able to you're not able to and uh, he's a he's a holy God he's a jealous God he'll not forgive your rebellion and your sins if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods he'll turn you know, disasters coming on you and people said no no we're gonna serve the Lord he said well then you better be witnesses to each other because the thing is we're not able to that's the whole point we think oh I got a choice you know yeah yeah okay I listen to Bob Dylan I'm gonna serve the Lord yeah doesn't matter who I am okay that's easy enough we can go have lunch but wait a minute something happens and we're really not able to something's gonna go crazy for us and um, and the interesting thing is that God knows that and uh, and so I think you know this we've really mistaken the uh, power of uh, God's forgiveness and his grace which actually make this choice for us doable if we didn't have forgiveness if we didn't have grace if Christ hadn't died on the cross and, and and ransomed our lives from sin if all that didn't happen we really wouldn't have a choice because we'd be locked in now the fact is that Jesus did die on the cross and we do have forgiveness and we do have a fresh start and we do have a choice and we do have God's love and and not just a wrathful response and so now for, for us an amazing time of saying yeah I will serve the Lord or no I think I just stay with my family traditions they were good enough um, or you know the neighbors they've got their own gods you know I think maybe I'll fit in there that'd be good then I won't feel awkward at the potlucks on the block party no I'll serve the Lord and you think well what's it gonna be now um, I've, I've been looking at this this uh, this week and, and particularly in light of the fact that uh, you know uh, my dad died in October I think his mom dies now this week and um, and I've been really thinking well, what does this mean and all of a sudden I'm caught up with the fact of who are the gods of our forefathers what are the gods that were part of the Westfall family that I grew up with what were the what were the traditions what what were the expectations what were the ways of processing things what were the ways of handling issues that actually were sacred in our home they were sacred they were there were holy holy traditions that you didn't cross but well, we had some and I bet you do too I know in Eileen's family they had their own set of uh, sacred traditions they had the gods of their forefathers mostly from Ireland but um, you know some North Dakota got in there and kind of polluted it a little but um, they had ways of looking at things from my background I thought was wacky that's the nice word it, I thought it was uh, how could your family process things that way how could they make decisions that way how could they put those priorities into place Eileen that's nuts this builds the relationship right and uh, and then she look over and go yeah well how about you guys you know you got that 
German Cherokee thing going. So you're you're angry and irresponsible. You know, I was like, whoa, well, hey, don't talk about me. And so pretty soon, my dad was arguing with her mom between us with our voices. You know, and and we realized we were in families that worship different gods from way back. And so the question is, do I have a choice? Am I just doomed to live out the legacy of my family? No. You can serve somebody. You can serve, you can serve your family's legacy. You can serve the devil. You can serve the Lord. But you're going to serve somebody. And I had to, I had to ask myself, who's that going to be? Who are you going to serve? And then he says, you know, you don't have to deal with your family stuff if you just want to worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're living. That's a choice. Look around us. Uh, have you noticed that the people around you at your work or your school or in your neighborhood, they've got their own set of gods and holy things that they treasure up and they want us to fit in. And we want to fit in in, in some ways, right? Uh, and sometimes I'm so tempted to just kind of take the what direction the winds going and turn there, you know. <laughs> okay, here's the winds of culture going this way or that way, and and I and I'm like one of those weather vanes sitting on the farmhouse, you know. <whistles> That's such a temptation for me. Uh, but there's a choice. You can choose that. You know, and you, and you know who your uh, Amorites are in your life, right? You could probably make a little list of who your Amorites are, who are the people around you that are, that are shaping you. We have a choice to say, no, yeah, I'm going to serve the Lord in the midst of a culture that is holding up other, other things. Now, I think the, this passage is, became more meaningful for me when I realized that what Joshua was doing when he says, no, 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 don't just say you're going to do this. Don't just say you're going to do it. Because, you know, there's ramifications. Your life's going to be shaped by this choice. So don't just say you're going to do it to make me happy, you know. And, uh, and I think he was concerned that they would get down the road and go, well, we were kind of coerced into that. And when we feel coerced, we tend to back away from it. We feel like it was a manipulation. Now, I began this series, you know, 10 years ago, uh, by quoting from William Glasser, the, the uh, psychiatrist from the Bay Area, in his book, Choice Theory. Um, and I want to go back to the quote that I shared with you because I think it's still really relevant. The only person whose behavior we can control is our own. In practice, if we're willing to suffer the alternative, which almost always is a severe punishment or death, no one can make us do anything we don't want to do. But when we're threatened with punishment, whatever we do, we rarely do well. Think about that. If, if, if we're feeling pushed into something or, or forced against our will or, or coerced in some way, we may go along for a while, but we don't do it well. You know, I, I, I hated doing dishes in our house. Uh, this is not our house now, but when there were like four kids and two adults and friends and, and the dishes were always a big thing. And, um, and I'd get assigned to it. And I learned something, and I would agree to do it because otherwise my dad was looming over me. You go talk back to your mother, you know. You know, he wasn't left-handed, so it's more like you don't talk back to your mother. You know? And uh, but uh, the thing is that so I would always say, okay, I got the dishes, okay, I'll do that. Kind of poor man's jacuzzi, you know, and I'm soaking in there. And uh, and I learned something. I learned an important lesson that I probably shouldn't share with you today, but I will anyway. And that is. Smash a dish every once in a while. 
You know the soap's on your hands, it's slippery, and all of a sudden one of mom's dishes, bang, shatter on the floor. And you say, oops. <laughs> yes, just like the doctor when he's doing surgery. Yes, oops. And then, uh, and then you go, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I don't know how that happened. Let me sweep it up, because that is the impression of helping, right? That's the impression. So while you're sweeping it up, mom comes in and goes, oh, let me just finish this. <laughs> wow! You know, I, I was not brilliant, but I was smart enough to pick up the tradition there, and uh, I learned that a periodic smashing of a plate gets me out of doing dishes. Why don't you get out of the way? We can do this better than you, you know. And, uh, and so I've learned, you know, to kind of do that in pastoral ministry too. You know, every once in a while, smash that spiritual plate. And then y'all come in and help and uh, I can go do something else. So, um, but the thing is that uh, we don't do well what we're coerced into doing. And we will not serve the Lord well if we're doing it to avoid punishment or to get the Lord off our back or to get John to quit hounding us over this hundred buck thing, you know? And, and if we feel pushed into it, we will not do it well. We'll end up smashing the spiritual plates all through our life. And I don't think that's what God has in mind for us. So let me say to you, make your own choice. Total freedom. I'm not going to hold anything over your head. I'm not going to threaten. I'm just going to say, make your choice in freedom. And if you want to, you know, you want to serve the devil, that's okay. You want to serve the Lord, that's good. If you want to serve the gods of your neighbors, okay. If you want to serve the family tradition gods, okay. You know, I'm the, I'm the pastor and I'm saying this to you. Go do it. But don't pretend. Don't, don't act like, oh yeah, you know, because that, when you're pretending it's not authentic and then pretty soon the church stops being authentic. I'd much rather that you come in here as committed pagans and, and let's talk about real life and real faith and, and real Jesus than to pretend everything's great, we're all serving the Lord together and we're really not. Does that make sense? I, I'm, I, I'm totally serious about this. Make your choice. And, and, you know, I can accept you being a total pagan here, serving the devil right here with us. You're still welcome at lunch today. No problem, you know. And uh, you can be first to get the smoked salmon. You know, I'll put you up front if you want. Because you're probably greedy anyway, serving the devil. So, you know. No, no wait. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> But the thing is, uh, I, I mean, I really mean it. There's so much better to, to, um, to be honest about. One other part here, and, and that is that Joshua says, choose this day. There's a time and a place to make our choice. And, um, okay, here's one of the gods of my family, my tradition that I grew up in, is the power of passivity. If you just don't choose, you know, that is a choice. Stuff happens, and, and it's like the riptide, you know, you're out at sea and the, and the riptide takes you and pulls you out. It's not really your fault, you can't be blamed for that, right? Uh, and, and we can just say, okay, I'm not going to choose. But Dylan would tell you, you're still going to serve somebody. Even by not choosing, you're going to serve somebody. And so, uh, I really want to encourage you not to resort to the, to the passivity. Now, what happens in our lives? How is our life shaped by this choice? If we choose to serve the Lord, how is our life going to be changed? Well, for one, it's going to be shaped because we're going to start to see the people around us differently. We're going to see them through God's eyes, not through our own. Because when, when I look at people through my eyes, I've got this whole grid of assumptions about how messed up you are and in what ways and you know, da 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 da. And, and I, I walk down the street and I figure out people's stuff that I'm passing or that are driving by me. I can look at them drive by and I know their stuff. 
I'm pretty accurate a lot of the times, you know. Um, because I have a mindset that says, do, 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 process, boom, do, process, boom, and, and you do too. But I don't think God wants us to go around doing that. I think he wants us to, to deal with people clean and fresh, and I think what he wants us to do is say, look at people differently. Not through the eyes of the gods of your family or your neighbors, but look at them through my eyes and see maybe their needs differently, maybe see their strengths differently, maybe see their situation differently, and it gives more freedom. Because I'll tell you, people are used to being treated a certain way based on their experiences. You know, I've had people over and over tell me, well, you know, I'd come to church, but, uh, you know, people will think I'm, you know, I don't really fit into that church crowd, so. And I go, well, I don't fit into the church crowd either. So some of you ended up coming, you know, that's good. But others have stayed away yet, and because they're going, ah, and they've got a mindset. And we need to be able to be surprised by God, right? Oh, that's God right now, surprising us with that <laughs> telephone. With his telephone, yeah, he uses that sprint. But, um, sorry, that wasn't an advertisement for your video people, that was not an advertisement for sprint, actually. <laughs> So, but the thing is that um, we start to see people differently. That's part of the shaping that happens. And we see life differently. We see opportunities differently. You know, I love what was shared today from Mark. Wasn't that amazing? That thing of, you know, he had this idea. I'll go into the market. I'll give him the hundred bucks that the pastor gave me. And that person will do my job for me. Cool. <laughs> you know? And instead, the mosque is involved. The Extended families involved, the neighborhoods involved. When, you know, uh, I heard that when the uh, single mom came in with a baby and was presented with his gift bags of stuff, she cried right in the store. And nobody <laughs> asked her what she wanted or needed or anything. They just said, we, we knew you'd be coming in and we're ready for you. You know, when the man with cancer comes in to get his little thing and there's a gift bag for him, we were ready for you. We were waiting for you. That's, you know, that market is how I want our church to be, right? When people come in, we go, hey, we're ready for you. You know, God's doing something in your life. It may have been hard for you to get here. You may come with your stuff, but um, it's a, you're a miracle being here. And I, and I think that's so, so important. The, um, We've got a friend, Craig Barnes. We were in a small group together for 13 years and uh, one of my favorite people. And he just got made president of Princeton Seminary today. Or not today, but this, this two months ago. And, um, and this is what he wrote. There is never a time when we ask a question more wrong than when we ask ourselves if we have faith in God. Can we say that's the wrong question? C.S. Lewis said that when, we, when he asked himself if he had faith, he began to lose it. For then he looked at his faith and not at God. And then Craig says this, the best way to strengthen faith is not to scrutinize it, but to look at the one in whom we are trusting. Right? Being too focused on faith is like trying to improve our vision by taking off our glasses and staring at them. <laughs> Boy, I can see a lot better now. <clears throat> The point is to look through them, not at them. When we look through the spectacles of faith, we discover the awe-inspiring, uncontrollable, maybe even frightening activity of God. Then we realize it was never our faith that saved and changed us, but rather the God we do not understand. We're going to serve somebody. Don't study service. Don't study your faith. Don't study the choices you make. Don't, don't do Just live them. Trust the Lord. Now, sometimes you guys write to me and, uh, you know, the message gets through. This week I got an email from one of you. Um, John, I was just sitting and reading some stuff from my personal journal where I periodically explore things and try to grow. I came upon a section of quotes that I'd copied and explored from a book that I was reading at the time back in September 2011. As I read this again, I thought of you. 
mentioning how you felt more confident at the end of last year about how the harbor had grown and additional ministry and outreach that occurred and the eradication of some of the debt. Then you'd said that you'd gotten a little freaked out more recently as the financial picture was less rosy uh, for the first two months of the year, causing you to worry uh, that we might need to shut the place down, at least temporarily, doubting God, that doubting that God is actually in control. Who listens to what I say anyway? You know. <laughs> anyway, uh, getting back to the quote that I'd written down, here's what it is. in God's kingdom, the challenge is to be stewards of unlimited resources. We don't have to be practical or sensible anymore. We don't have to talk to each other, but we don't have to talk each other out of big dreams. That's a good quote. Do you remember writing that and coloring outside the lines all those years ago? <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about this quite a bit during the past year and a half, realizing, but never really coming to terms with God's unlimited ability to accomplish the end he has in mind. No obstacles, time, money, human failings, or weakness Get in God's way. His Holy Spirit's leading and His power is beyond our imagining. Amen. Don't you hate it when they throw your own words back at you? When they throw your own beliefs at you and say, start living what you believe? Isn't that what the body is? Right? So as for me and my house, my household, we're going to serve the Lord. And you can make your choice. And we're going to love you whichever you choose. Still welcome. But if you want to choose to follow the Lord with me, I'm, I'm thrilled to have you there too. Okay? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we put ourselves in your hands and we, we, would, we would trust you instead of study trust. We would look at you rather than look at faith. We would serve you rather than meditate on serving you. So give us the courage to be your vessels, your hands, your feet, your mouth, your heart out in this world. And Lord, stay close because we need you so very much. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.